and uh, Dick Martin is the co-facilitator for the course. Um, without him, we'd be sunk. <laughs> My apologies. Probably... I would be sunk without him, too. <laughs> okay. Um, this morning, um, well, actually, this is the fourth or the seventh year that we've done Adventures in Living. It started as a course in 2014 with ILR. And um, this year, it's a little different because we've, we're Zooming and all of our sessions have been pre-recorded, um, but they will be played each week. And the uh, presenter will be here uh, to answer questions um, at the end. This morning, I would like to introduce John Spindler, who is our first presenter of this season. And um, his recording was um, made in October of this year. Um, so he will explain um, a little of that at the end if you have questions. Anyway, here is John and uh, let's give him a big welcome and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, John. Be glad to let the uh, videotape roll. It will speak for itself. Good morning. I paraphrase Andy Williams' holiday hit of 1963. It's the most wonderful times of my years. Now, judging from the presentation of this title, you'll find that music will be a common thread throughout my life, along with some other core values that help me become who I am. Watch and listen for family, church, community service, a career in public school education, and a passion for sports, theater, and travel. It all began with my birth on November 18, 1936, in beautiful and historic Marietta, Ohio, population at that time around 14,000. Marietta is located at the confluence of the Muskingum and Ohio Rivers, midway in the Ohio Valley. It was the first permanent settlement of the Northwest Territory established in 1788. It provided a safe, conservative, and nurturing environment for growing up. Marietta has received a great deal of attention recently as the focus of the 2019 best-selling book, The Pioneers, by famed historian David McCullough. I received this copy this last year, enjoyed it, I wanted to bring it with me today, just a little commercial. My maternal grandparents were Herman and Mary Totman of Welsh descent. They were hardworking farmers, producers of corn, hay, and vegetables on their property just outside of Marietta. They owned a horse called, called Old Bob, shown here, pulling the carriage with my mother as a small child on the lap of grandma. Chickens, pigs, and several dairy cows were part of the farm also. My paternal grandparents were Bill and Minnie Spindler of German descent. They owned Spindler's Meat Market in downtown Marietta, and Grandpa was an accomplished butcher, and Minnie the consummate housewife. Their parents were German immigrants, and they reflected that background with wonderful German cuisine and family traditions. My parents were Howard and Thelma Spindler. They are where I received my music genes. Here's my beautiful mother as she was dating my dad. Now, no wonder why my father took a shine to her. She played the piano and worked at a dance studio in Marietta. 
My dad was quite the dapper young man shown here. He was quite the musician playing the saxophone and clarinet. He, was, he dropped out of high school when he was discovered by Harry Jones, whose band was the Royal Harmonists. After being on the road with the band for a year, he moved up the ladder to tour with Stephen Marlowe and his Ohioans. Then he was recruited by the famous orchestra director, Paul Whiteman. Here he is in his professional garb as a member of the Paul Whiteman Orchestra, playing in theaters and dance halls all over the country. Mom and dad were married, and they made their home in Marietta. Dad retired from his traveling with the orchestra and began working with his father at Spindler's Market. Now here are some pictures showing me while growing up in my early years in Marietta with mom and my older sister Lee in 1936. In 1938 with Perky, our family dog. At the farm feeding chickens at the Totman farm. And me pretending to smoke my dad's pipe. My third birthday gift was a Lone Ranger cowboy suit, along with a proper gun and holster set. Here we are out at the gas well on the farm. After World War II, Dad became the superintendent of the city water department in Marietta. My mother worked at Marietta College as secretary to the dean of students and later as secretary to the president of Marietta College. I attended Washington Elementary School, a short walking distance from our home for grades K through six. I began piano lessons in the first grade. This was an expectation, not an option for me, as well as my sisters. I loved to sing more than play the piano. My two sisters excelled in piano performance. Here are the three of us when I was in grade school. My fourth grade teacher was Miss Graham, who also directed the school chorus. She took a keen interest in me as a singer and provided many opportunities for chorus experience and solo work. My mom arranged singing lessons for me with Dr. Gifford, the choral and vocal performance professor at Marietta College and quite an outstanding tenor soloist himself. As soon as I reached eighth grade, my voice changed from boy soprano to a true tenor. That cleared the way for me to sing in the choir at the First Presbyterian Church in the senior choir. Singing in church choirs stayed with me the rest of my life. I also began playing sports in Little League baseball and boys club football and basketball. While I attended uh, Marietta Junior High School, I delivered newspapers for the Marietta Daily Times. My route on bicycle was over two miles long with over 100 to 150 papers on bicycle to throw on home porches each day after school. On Saturday mornings, I walked the route to collect the weekly subscription cost from each customer. I loved having the independent income, small as it was, in addition to my allowance. Newspapers were, newspaper carriers were well thought of and respect, respected in the community. In the eighth grade, I joined the eighth grade chorus as an elective class. So my singing was further advanced and cultivated. At that time also, I was finally able to talk my parents into allowing me to stop piano lessons much to their disappointment. But sports and working were taking too much time for me to practice sufficiently. They warned me, John, you'll be sorry you quit when you are older. Well, years later, I understood what they meant. To this day, I'd love to be a jazz pianist like Dave Brubeck or Oscar Peterson. Sports became a major interest during this time. 
Grow up, growing up in Ohio, Ohio State was the only big-time college program around. I idolized Vic Janowitz, Howard Hopalong Cassidy, as well as basketball je legends Jerry Lucas and John Havlicek. The Big Ten was it. I loved trading baseball cards. That was a big-time hobby for teenage boys at that time. Kept me out of trouble. The Cleveland Indians baseball team was world champions in 1948. Hooray for Bob Feller, Bob Lemon, and Mike Garcia, and Lou Boudreau. Entering senior high school, I was old enough to get a work permit and start part-time work after school and on Saturdays at Bonham's department store in downtown Marietta as a stock boy, delivery boy, and whatever else needed to be done for 50 cents an hour. I loved operating the four-story elevator whenever possible, although there were some ups and downs to that task. Here's a picture of Bonham's department store as it looked several years ago when I attended a reunion in Marietta. When I was a senior in high school, I began clerking in the men's department and received a raise to $1 an hour, a 100% raise. <laughs> Working after school and Saturdays did not allow me to participate in high school athletics, but I enjoyed being the PA announcer in the press box for the home football games, like this. Stevens, the ball player, for a gain of six yards, brought down by Jones at the Tiger 46-yard line. That was during my junior and senior years at Marietta High School. Here are some pictures from my high school yearbook showing some of the highlights and adventures in the wonderful 50s. I was a member of the National Thespian Society for being in plays and drama productions. National Forensic League, president and captain of the debate team. There I am in the middle looking at the title of the subject that year was, oh, I remember now, resolved that the president of the United States should be elected by the direct vote of the people. Some things never go away, do they? National Honor Society, right at a high school chorus, there I am circled. I was president of the chorus in my junior and senior years. And here's an interesting thing. My senior year, I was the vocalist for the John Duvall Quintet. Now, Johnny is the trumpet player there, and it's his band. We had a quintet, three uh, rhythm section, and a trombone and a trumpet. And we uh, sang at do uh, school dances and at the local teenage hangout called the Tiger Tavern in the YMCA. I remember my uh, favorite vocals with the quintet at that time. They included, you'll remember some of these, Blue Moon, Ebb Tide, Hey There, Oh My Papa, Eddie Fisher, and Love is a many splendored thing. I graduated high school, class of 1954. My college years were at the hometown Marietta College, home of the pioneers, which was an excellent private four-year liberal arts college with an enrollment of around 1,200 students at that time. I majored in speech and drama with a minor in English education. My parents were a bit disappointed with that choice. They always wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer. I went through Greek rush in the fall of 1954 and pledged Alpha Tau Omega fraternity, becoming an active member later after surviving hazing. I soon became the song leader for the fraternity and organized a quartet named the Four Taws imitating the unique close harmony styles of the famous Four Freshmen. The Four Freshmen were the country's leading vocal group at that time. I developed a technique of listening to their recordings and wrote arrangements replicating their harmonies on the piano for our group. The Taws became very popular, 
singing at college assemblies and convocations, dances and serenades into the sorority houses on the campus and in town. The freshmen, remember, it's a blue world and graduation day by the freshmen? I bet you do. In the spring of my sophomore year, I was chosen by my fraternity to run for president of the student body called Student Senate during my junior year. I was duly elected. This was a campaign picture on the steps of the library. Notice the classic flat top haircut popular at that time. Here is a student senate picture, John Spindler, president down front there. Other organizations on honoraries followed. Who's Who and American Colleges and Universities, top right. Pi Kappa Delta, that's a forensics honorary, and I was on the debate team for Marietta College. Had a very successful year that year, going undefeated. Alpha Psi Omega, the Drama Honorary, the Oratorio Society. We produced the Messiah each Christmas season. And here, this was in the Baptist Church downtown Gainesville, or downtown <laughs> Marietta, each Christmas. It's a wonderful experience. The ATOs, led by John Spindler, singing their way to victory. This was for the Greek Sing. It was open competition between all the sororities and fraternities. And that year we were wearing those classic Ivy League crew cut sweaters. We thought we were pretty tough guys. We sang moments to remember. In 1957, the world premiere of the movie Battle Hymn was held in Marietta. It was a story of Colonel Dean Hess, a Methodist minister he was labeled the Flying Parson. He was from Marietta, lived just around the corner from me, in fact, was on my paper route. Colonel Hess was an advisor to the South Korean Air Force during the Korean War and was responsible for the founding of an orphanage for displaced children in Seoul, Korea. He was played by, you betcha, there he is, Rock Hudson, and also featured were Dan Durier, Jock Mahoney, and Martha Heyer. Now, Don, Dan Durier, not as in this picture, but uh, he had a reputation of being a real party animal, a real party man in Hollywood. So we in the fraternity invited him to spend an evening one night during the week when, during the celebration. Well, he did not disappoint. He drank, and then he drank some more. He drank several of my fraternity brothers under the table, literally. I had the honor of being the personal guide and valet for Rock Hudson during the week-long celebration because I was president of the student body that year. He was a kind and well-grounded Hollywood uh, star, quite handsome as well, as you all know. He was awarded an honorary Doctor of Humanities degree by Marietta College at the spring graduation ceremony. Here's my 1958 graduation picture. And I was president of the senior class in 1958. During summer months while in college, 1954 to 58, and then while teaching, 58 through 67, I worked at Culvermere, a resort for young active adults located in the foothills of the Pocono Mountains near the Del Delaware Water Gap. During my freshman year at Marietta College, the four Taws were recruited to work as waiters in the dining room at Culvermere from Memorial Day to Labor Day, the only time that the, that the resort was open during the, school, during the year. Waiters were hired from places like Marietta College Oberlin, Conservatory of Music, uh, the University of Indiana, outstanding musical programs in those colleges and universities. They were recruited to come and work as waiters, and then also, if they had the musical and acting talent, dancing talent, which they did, 
They performed in the stage and floor shows. We became the Culvermere Quartet, singing four freshman songs in the shows. I continued to write arrangements for more songs. After three summers of waiting tables at Culvermere, I was promoted to the social staff, working on guest activities and entertainment. In the summer of 1960, I was made head social director, and I served in that capacity until 1967. I directed all social activities and the Thursday and Saturday night stage shows and the late floor shows in the nightclub. I look back on these years at Culvermere as the age of my greatest personal growth. I became a man. There I am gesturing about something in the distance at the horse stables. After graduating from college in 1958 with my BA, BA degree, I was hired to teach at Charles F. Brush High School in the eastern suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio. There I taught speech, drama, and English for two years. I directed two senior plays for extracurricular activity. I also married Peggy Upstill of Marietta in 1960. After getting married, we moved to Culver's Lake, New Jersey, location of Culvermere, so I could continue my work as social director during the summers. I was hired by the local school district there to teach eighth grade language arts during the school year. I tell you, I made almost as much money working three months at Culvermere in the summer as I did teaching nine months in the classroom. While teaching, I also commuted to Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, nights and Saturdays, working on my master's degree in school administration. This, this degree was awarded in spring 1968. During that time, Peggy and I had two sons, Greg in 1961 and Mark in 1963, and I was ordained as an elder in the local Presbyterian church in Branchville. In the summer of 1968, we moved to Gainesville in order to, for me to enroll at the University of Florida to pursue an advanced degree in middle school curriculum and instruction. I also, I also chose to work full time and was hired by the Alachua County School Board to be the language arts coordinator on the county staff. <clears throat> I attended graduate classes at UF part time in the evenings and Saturdays. From 1968 to 74, I was a language arts coordinator, then assistant principal at the new Marjorie Kennan Rawlings Elementary School, and then principal of Mabane Middle School in Alachua, the first white principal of that school. Here is a, an article in the Gainesville Sun showing myself and Bill Cake uh, being appointed uh, as young, upstanding, young educators. Peggy and I had our third child during this time, a daughter, Lynn. Here they are in our backyard pool area in 1973, along with the family Cocker Spaniel, Buffy. Greg, Lynn, and Mark, and Buffy in the foreground. In 1974, Alachua County Schools needed an additional middle school. Lincoln High School, with an all-black student body, was, was closed in mid-year of 1969-70 under the court-ordered desegregation plan. The students were sent to Gainesville High School in order de to desegregate that school amidst considerable protests. The Lincoln facility was remodeled and converted into the new middle school. In 1974, when it opened, I was appointed the first principal at Lincoln Middle School and given the responsibility of developing and leading a fully integrated middle school in the center of the black community. If you've driven to the airport from OH, you'll go right past the middle school over there on Waldo Road. Now that was quite a challenge. White students 
from Southwest and Northwest Gainesville were bused to Lincoln to create a 60-40 white to black student body. Enrollment was approximately 1,100 students, grades six through eight. In order to uh, make the school attractive and desirable to all the community of parents and students, I needed to create a model middle school, replacing the junior high school system based on the unique needs of middle school age students. This included an organization of interdisciplinary te teaching teams, flexible scheduling and for core curriculum classes, multi-age grouping, an advisor advisee program, a comprehensive exploratory program, and an intramural sports program. Notice the haircut back in those days, 1974. Love the sideburns now. I was fortunate to be able to hire faculty and staff committed to the middle school concept, as well as accepting transfer from other schools in the county. Lincoln Middle School became recognized as an exemplary and innovative middle school program and hosted many visitors from around the state and the nation as the middle school movement flourished in the 70s and 80s. Notable parents of Lincoln students at that time included Okamic residents Margaret Boonstra, mother of Alexa and Tara, who was president of the School Advisory Council, and Peg Natris, mother of Kenny, who was president of the PTA. Vicki Mulhern here was a member of the faculty, a team leader, and an excellent teacher in the Gifted Students program. While at Lincoln, I became the executive director of the Florida League of Middle Schools from 1982 to 87. And I served on the board of the National Middle School Association from 84 to 87. While I was at Lincoln, Sissy Graham, daughter of Florida governor at that time, Bob Graham and his wife Adele, completed her internship at the University of Florida by teaching seventh and eighth grade social studies and language arts at Lincoln. She was a model intern, a promising young teacher, and she loved her experience at Lincoln. So Bob and Adele invited her team of teachers, 127 seventh graders, to visit the governor's mansion in Tallahassee for the day. Of course, I went with them. What a great experience for middle schoolers. Here I am presenting the governor with a Lincoln Bulldog t-shirt at the luncheon on the grounds of the mansion. By the way, Governor Graham was an outstanding advocate for education during his years in Tallahassee, and I'm glad he's with us here in Okamak. During my time in Gainesville, starting in 1972, I renewed my participation in music and drama performing in 14 spring musicals at the Gainesville Little Theater, later renamed the Gainesville Community Playhouse. I was president of the Gainesville Community Playhouse in 1984, the year that we changed the name from the Little Theater to the more professional sounding Community Playhouse. That was a, a proud uh, initiative that I felt I uh, was involved in. Guys and Dolls at the Little Theater I played Nicely Nicely Johnson. Now, can you imagine me playing Nicely Nicely? I was Stubby K back in the day. I remember the showstopper, sit down, you're rocking the boat. South Pacific, I played Lieutenant Cable. I remember Leot singing Younger Than Springtime. Oklahoma, 1976. I played the part of Curly, lead role. I remember, oh, what a beautiful morning. And in that show also, there's the opening scene with Judd Fry. This was down at the plaza it was called Centennial Plaza that year, that year, and we did the performance of Oklahoma uh, on, on the stage there in the open air as an added attraction that year. 
Malcolm Getz, who's a famous um, uh, Gainesville celebrity, TV and Broadway star, Malcolm Getz was a young boy in this cast. Yeah, I think he was about seven years old at that time. And um, he was quite a child prodigy and a student of theater and music especially, and dancing. Brigadoon, Tommy, Tommy Albright on the left. I remember one of my favorite songs, It's Almost Like Being in Love. Next was the unsinkable Molly Brown. I played Johnny Leadville Brown. I remember, I'll never say no to you, to Molly. This is from Scene Magazine, back in the day. Girl Crazy. I played the part of Johnny. I remember Embraceable You, the great George Gershwin song. This was a, a big article in the Gainesville Scene Magazine, and uh, I took a lot of heat from this from my faculty and students at Lincoln when I came in the next day after that was produced. And, uh, but I was a leading man for quite a few years, and it was in the spring when these musicals were produced. There's uh, Annie Get Your Gun. I played Charlie. I remember, and they're singing right there, there's no business like show business. This is an interesting musical review by Stephen Sondheim, side by side by Sondheim. And there's Malcolm Getz also, one, two, three, four, five, six. The third man in were three women and three men in this musical review. And the director was Chad Green, who was an institution here in Gainesville as a producer and director. But Malcolm Getz was a student at the university at that time and a uh, graduate of Buchholz High School. He was quite an entertainer and still is now professor in the music department at the University of Florida. There's the bios in the program, so I threw that in there. I still have that long hair. There's Chad at the bottom. And this is an unknown show that I really liked. The name of it was Baby. And I played the part of Alan, and I remember playing a mature young man and married and talking to my wife about easier to love. And Gypsy, a musical fable. And I played the part of Herbie. And I remember from this show, Everything's Coming Up Roses, quite a showstopper. In the meantime, I received my education specialist degree from UF in 1979. Community service has always been an interest of mine. I joined the Gator City Breakfast Kiwanis Club in 1974 and served naturally, as their song leader. I was also president of the club for two years. In 1985, Kiwanis International awarded me a lifetime membership. I was also a member of the 10th Leadership Gainesville class of 1984. In the spring of 1987, I was recruited to apply for the position of executive director of middle schools for the Fulton County School Board, serving approximately 40,000 students uh, of the southern and northern suburbs of Atlantic, Atlanta, Georgia. Peggy and I had separated, and our divorce was finally uh, finalized shortly thereafter. I accepted the challenge to move up the professional ladder in school administration. I moved to Atlanta that summer. My children stayed in Florida to finish their university studies, but loved visiting me in Atlanta. Greg on the left, Lynn and Mark, respectively. Beginning a new job and life as a bachelor in the big city was quite an adventure in itself. My work with Fulton County as executive director for 11 middle schools put me in a working relationship with the executive director of elementary schools, Dr. Don Dickey who had come to Fulton County a year earlier from East Lansing, Michigan, 
an alumnus and faculty member at Michigan State University, where she received her PhD in Special Education Administration. Attending board meetings, PTA meetings, superintendent cabinet meetings together put us in constant contact with one another. And as the months passed, we gradually developed from a professional relationship to best friends and colleagues, and then to a romantic relationship. In the spring of 1988, we became engaged and had to remain that way for nine years due to a nepotism policy by the school board. But more about that later. Dawn introduced me to the world of international travel. She had grown up as an army brat living in Europe and the Middle East and had a passion for studying different cultures and world exploration. And she shared that with me. Some favorite countries we visited included Switzerland, Scandinavia, China, France, Canada, and Italy, our all-time favorite, which we frequented many times in the future. Culinary and wine tours were the best, in our opinion. One more of my memorable adventures was in 1992. I was asked by Aramco Oil to, uh, that was based in Daharan, Saudi Arabia, to serve as consultant in their efforts to convert their local American schools there in Saudi Arabia from junior high schools to middle schools. I was honored to accept that invitation and flew to Dahran in December, shortly after the Gulf War. When the plane landed there, I could see artillery bunkers armed with machine guns in the terminal. The artillery bunkers were on the landing runways and security guards everywhere had machine guns. I was whisked off to the security room where they inspected all my luggage and even looked over with great suspicion the audiovisual materials that I used in my workshops for the school board administrators, the teachers, and workshops for, teach for parents of the students in the schools. The guards had sinister expressions on their faces during this process. I was patient and very cooperative, needless to say. <laughs> Officials from the Aramco Oil Company school system treated me royally as I conducted staff development workshops for staff and parent workshops to inform them about the middle school philosophy and practices. They flew me out into the desert to isolated communities where the oil was coming out of the ground to include all affected middle level schools they administered in the country. My presence there had been publicized in the papers and anticipated for months prior to my arrival. So they were motivated and anxious to learn the content of the material I presented. One side story of my experience in Dahran, uh, I went around and visited um, some of the uh, administrators for Dahran schools and for the, the company, and I would have dinner in the evenings there oftentimes. Um, some of the American employees of Aramco Oil built stills in their garage attached to their home. That was because no alcohol was allowed in Saudi Arabia. So this was their way around it. Aramco Oil frowned upon that process, but didn't really enforce it that well. One night while having dinner at one of the homes, there was a loud explosion down the block. And sure enough, one of the stills exploded. And as administrative procedures were indicated, the employee and their entire family were sent back to the United States the next day, immediately. That was the end of employment with Aramco Oil. Here I am in the native garb I brought home just as a souvenir. I thought I was going to use that for a Halloween contest, but we, we decided, Don and I decided that wasn't politically correct at that time. Uh, in our life. 
Upon returning, the Christmas season found us visiting Santa in the Atlanta Shopping Center. Notice the Gator outfit on Dawn as well. She had become a true Gator fan over time and still supported the MSU Spartans as well. As stated previously, our school system had a nepotism policy that prohibited, prohibited Don and me to marry while we were in the positions, both of us executive directors reporting directly to the superintendent. We continued to adhere to this policy for nine years. However, in 1996, the school board <clears throat> decided to build a new state-of-the-art middle school in North County, in the Roswell Alpharetta area. It was going to be a state-of-the-art school, a large school. A nationwide search was held to have a, an appropriate principal open that school. The first rounds were held, and the committee that interviewed the candidates did not come up with a favorable candidate, so they re-advertised and had another search, the same thing happened. There must have been eight or 10 candidates in that second round. None of them were suitable as far as the committee, which was composed of principals, teachers, and community members, as well as county staff. And uh, in a conference with the superintendent of schools, he was lamenting the fact that we just did not have a suitable candidate to open that new school. It was critical that be successful. I had had the experience of opening two new schools in my past, that being Marjorie Kennan Rawlings Elementary in Gainesville and Lincoln Middle School in Gainesville. So I said to uh, Dr. Dolinger, now, I wouldn't mind going up to Alpharetta and being the principal of that opening that school as long as I didn't take a paycheck loss. And uh, that way, Don and I could get married because I'd be a principal again. That would not violate the nepotism policy. The superintendent appointed me that very week, and it became Northwestern Middle School John P. Spindler principal. This allowed us to get married in, on September 28, 1996. We tied the knot. After the ceremony, the Gators had a football game in the afternoon. So what did we do? <laughs> you bet. We went to the Buckhead $2 Cafe to watch the game. I think it was against Kentucky. We honeymooned that weekend at the renowned Ritz-Carlton in Buckhead. I had opened Northwestern Middle School earlier in September as their principal. It was great being a principal again, where you can really make a difference. I firmly believe that. The way to make change and to move forward is to be in a position as principal of a school and lead. Don and I had a home built to our specifications on a new golf course called Chapel Hills in Douglasville, just west of Atlanta, of which it's a beautiful little lake in behind there. There's the uh, fifth green. And uh, the three kids enjoyed visiting up in Atlanta. Here they are. You can see them getting older, each photograph. Mark, Lynn, and Greg. The new school needed landscaping at the main entrance walkway. Here are Don and I, with the PTA president on the left, planting shrubs that were transplants of the famous hedges of Sanford Stadium at the University of Georgia. That was quite a humorous sight, a fervent gator planting Georgia bulldog hedges in front of the school. That got a lot of laughs. Northwestern had 2,000 students when it opened, the largest middle school in Fulton County at that time. We had to put like eight or 10 portable classrooms on the campus in addition to the large footprint of the uh, brick and mortar school. Here's my office. I always thought being visible and accessible was a good trait for a leader. So I enjoyed being in the cafeteria at lunchtime. Most administrators don't like to do that. 
teachers really appreciated my being there and leading by example. Keeping a positive environment there was important, as well as getting to know the students individually in that setting. Look, we have gators deep in enemy territory. That kid took a ribbing that day. Here is the newspaper at the time when I decided to retire, and they dedicated the issue of the Wildcat Pride to me. I decided to retire in June after having four years at Lincoln and loving every minute of it after 43 years in education. In the rapport uh, newsletter that was produced by the school board, I love this. Time to sleep, travel, and enjoy. And I love this quote because it's a true, a true feeling I had at that time, and I still have it this day. Time to sleep, travel, and enjoy. I would have to say that the best thing that happened to me during my time in Fulton County was meeting my wife, Don Dickey. I also was honored to serve for four years as the first principal of Northwestern Middle School. Here's Don speaking at my retirement ceremony on the stage in the gymnasium. A year later, Don retired in 2001 as area superintendent of schools. We sold our home and moved to Gainesville, where we built a home on the Hale Plantation Golf Course, like this one, right on the 7th Fairway. I always dreamed of retirement on a golf course. Here I am with my Gator golf cart, which was a retirement gift from my PTA at Northwestern and the faculty. I joined the Hale Senior Golfers, a group of men, and six years later became the director of that group from 2007 to 2018. I must say, hurting the, that group of gentlemen, retirees, was like teaching kindergarten. Each day, we played golf. It was a wonderful experience, but it, it, it was amazing trying to direct them around. They had independent minds, for sure. Qantas Club was, again, my community service contribution in the University City Club. I am serving here as song leader at our weekly meetings at the Hilton Hotel on 34th Street. Travel continued to be a favorite pastime for Don and me. Here's some pictures. Italy, winery and culinary tour, of course, in Tuscany. Culinary session making pasta. I got a prize for the pasta that I made from that lady who was the uh, instructor on that particular trip. The Matterhorn in Switzerland, up in Zermatt. Yosemite National Park. We love China. They're in a rice paddy. We were there just three weeks before the Olympics were held in Beijing. China Garden. England, the Waterford Crystal Factory. That was a beautiful situation. And my favorite, Times Square and Broadway going back there as much as time would allow. As a Kiwanian, I organized and became the club advisor for the Kanapaha Middle School Builders Club from 2004 to 2018. Builders Club promotes leadership citizenship skills for students. Being a Gainesville resident in Hale Plantation, Don and I were well aware of the excellent reputation Oak Hammock had in the community. We placed ourselves on the waiting list in 2012 and decided to move here in December 2018. My activities here include attending as many Gator sports and theater presentations as possible, utilizing the wonderful Oak Hammock buses. Singing tenor and the Oak Hammock Singers, and the Oak Hammock Harmonizers, barbership, sharp, the Barbershop Quartet. 
I serve as a member of the ILR Curriculum Committee and Recycled Riches Committee. Above all, time will continue to be spent following the experiences of our four grandchildren as they grow and develop. They have gone from infancy in this picture, that was Greg, to the following. Jack and Samantha Fuller, they live in Salt Lake City with their mother and dad. Zach and Dylan Spindler in Greenville, South Carolina, they run for the Blue Ridge High School track team and cross country team. That's just outside of Greenville, South Carolina in a place called Traveler's Rest. But especially Zach. Zach he is now a freshman at the University of Florida studying aeronautical engineering. This year, a freshman. So you may see him around the Okamic dining room in the future. I look forward to many more years here with Don and the friends we have made with the wonderful OH residents and staff. With all this said, I hope that you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane with me. Thank you. Are we back? Yeah, hi, John. That was wonderful. Thank you. This is Diane. Um, I have a question for you. Knowing how music and the arts were cut back in the schools in the last many years, were you able to emphasize and use your talents in the field of music when you were principal in the schools? Well, I think all the students, am I coming through okay on audio? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're I think all the students in the school, as well as the parents, and I guess Margaret Boonstra could vouch for that, uh, knew of my interest in humanities and the arts uh, and demonstrated by my participation with the uh, chorus and the, and the church choir at the First Presbyterian Church here, um, that I appreciated uh, uh, music, performance, as well as studying it. Um, and one of the main things was, is that cultivating a love for singing with boys. Uh, singing and being a musician is not a sissy thing. Some people did think that back in those days. Uh, and perhaps, it's, it, perhaps it is, is evident today too, but it's not a sissy thing. It's a wonderful talent and a gift that uh, God gives you. So why not share it with others? Um, and recently here, the Gainesville community is not uh, hesitant to support the arts. They passed the bond issues and the, and the penny tax program to fund uh, physical education and uh, art and music uh, when things got tough here several years ago in Alachua County Schools. Okay? Yes, thank you. I, I also miss um, singing with the chorus here. I know you must uh, because we haven't been together um, really since last March. Um, do you still practice to keep your voice um, in good shape? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a real good question. Yes, I do practice. I have to do that. At, at my age, you know, you're, you can have some atrophy with uh, your uh, vocal cords and, and other parts of your body that contribute to, your, you know, your diaphragm and things like that contribute to, to singing well. Uh, I have, a, Don and I have a large walk-in closet that is fully, uh, it's full of clothing, which is a great uh, buffer for my voice as I get in there and, and practice. So I go behind that, into the closet and close the door and practice my songs. And um, not necessarily the chorus numbers, but the solos that I do, I have to really work on those for, uh, vocalization. And it's tough right now because uh, uh, the group, as you know, we were having uh, periodical 
uh, uh, periodic uh, meetings with uh, Brenda and Ron to exercise our voices and try to keep them in shape until the time we do get back together. Great, thank you. My, by my neighbors say they can't hear me, so that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have any questions from our audience? I, I would just like to make a comment. Um, I had two daughters uh, attend Lincoln when John was principal there. And I can tell you that no principal was more beloved than John was. He ran a fantastic school. And Vicki uh, 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 Hearns was their magnificent teacher. It was a great place for our children to be. And Peg Natras had uh, encouraged me to send my children there. So uh, uh, all of these Okamic connections are really nice. But um, I also thoroughly enjoyed seeing John on the stage uh, here in Gainesville. And I was one of those who fell in love with him every spring too, as he sang these wonderful songs. So I was just uh, so excited when he came to Okamic and I got to meet Dawn and uh, now serve on committees with both of them. It's great. Thank you, John. I thought this was just wonderful. Thank you, Margaret. I agree with Margaret. Thank you, John. Are there any other questions now or comments? Don, Don, McLaughlin. Don McLaughlin, you want to unmute? There we go. Hi, John. Hi, Don. Uh, of all the musicals that you were in, primarily in lead roles, if you were able to do one again, what would be your favorite? What would you, what would be the role you'd like to do again? I uh, I've been asked that question before, and I always have said Brigadoon, uh, okay. even though Oklahoma has uh, a more of a, a legendary status. Brigadoon uh, especially affected me because I think the beautiful music and dancing in that show. Uh, has left a, 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 a very special place in my heart. Um, the one show uh, that, I mean, the one song from that show that I particularly remember, it's almost like being in love, is, is one of my best. Dale Williams, did you have any comments? I saw your microphone. No, I don't. Okay. I just wanted to say, I'll talk to you later. No, I have no comment. It was a wonderful, John. I really, really enjoyed the whole presentation. Thank you. Dale, you were a principal too, weren't you? No, I was not a principal. Uh-huh. You know how important they are, though. <laughs> of course I do. I've had some of the best, and you're right. They're very important. And yes, John had an excellent reputation in Alonzo County. I was uh, struck, John, that you mentioned uh, uh, how how much you felt you should be within with uh, among the students, and showed that picture of you in the cafeteria, which is a wild place to be. But I remember how you every single day were out there when the kids got on the school buses. You were there, and uh, I don't think any other principal in the county. Um, sh showed up as much as you did to be with the students, and that made such a difference. Yes, and I uh, particularly liked being out uh, in the front driveway when parents were dropping off students. Yeah, you sure uh, were there. Particularly up at Northwestern Middle School in Alpharetta, because those parents, uh, while we did have many busing, uh, buses available a lot of them drove their students to uh, their children to school and I got to see parents as well as students that way and they really appreciated that visibility on campus is an extremely important part of uh, leadership okay thank you John um, that was a wonderful beginning for the Adventures in Living course. And uh, we really appreciate all that you've done to put this together. Um, so I'm going to invite everyone to be with us again next week. And we'll see Don McLaughlin, who is right up there, uh, the middle of my screen anyway. Um, so come back and see us again next week. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you, John.